Hi everyone, um, this um, video is based on an irregular valley rafter as I call it. It's basically one that's not 45 degrees on plan. Uh, so in this example, uh, we have two roofs intersecting each other, two roof surfaces, uh, two A roof surfaces we'll say, and um, they're creating a valley. And uh, as you can see here, uh, there's a plan view here, and um, here is the line of the valley. Uh, this is the larger um, span here, uh, the main roof, I'm calling it the main roof span, and this thing is the minor roof span from here to here. And of course, there's your ridge board. So here's the valley, and as you can see, it's not 45 degrees on plan because this is a smaller span intersecting with a larger half span, I should have said. And um, because of that, then this... Um, the, the, the valley uh, and the, the run of the valley will not be 45 degrees on plan. That's where the two roofs enter are coming in at 90 degrees to each other as shown here. So uh, we'll just move on from that there. So <clears throat> just uh, so um, yeah, I was just stating again here and writing basically. Yeah, so and of course the ridge boards are at the same height. So um, in this example, so uh, they're both gone up to the same rise. So um, all the uh, the valley and the both commons for both rafter for both roofs have the same rise. They all have the same rise here at the same point. So they're all converging here, one rise point right here. And we're working out from a line diagram of it, uh, which we always do with most any roof geometry or any setting out of the roof. So so here I just want to make the point that uh, uh, there's a right angle triangle here that, that uh, and the uh, valley run line forms the hypotenuse of that right angle triangle and this is going to be animated here now and that's what we're the first thing we need to find out is we're, we're going to try and find out what is this valley run distance so there is the right angle triangle that we're going to be dealing with and this side of the right angle triangle relates to half the span of the minor roof and this side of that right angle triangle relates to half the span of this major roof we call it major roof surface and I'll just play it on here. How that relates then to your side square, uh, basically an L you make up on the ground or two rafters, is uh, I just brought in a quick animation here just to illustrate that point. And there it is there. There is your side square. And those are the two measurements uh, you're going to measure up on uh, both sides of that leg. The uh, minor uh, roof half span and the major roof half span. And the diagonal between that then is your valley run. So you'll need to, you, that's that's a quick way of finding out that distance. So moving on from that, then we next need to um, assemble a side square. So just a quick word on assemble a side square. As mentioned earlier, it's two rafters held together at ninety degrees to each other. Uh, using the three, four, five method, you'll be able to square one off the other, uh, as discussed in earlier videos. Um, there's your typical three, four, five as based on Pythagoras theorem. That's one way of squaring it. So. You have three units this way and four units that way. Then, once you get five units on the diagonal, then you know it is 90 degrees. And uh, obviously, you'd have to keep it at 90 degrees then by bracing it. So, that's your L that you're initially making up on the ground to set everything off. And uh, so, and then you put in a brace there just to keep it at 90 so it doesn't, it doesn't move. So, the first thing we're going to do here is mark the minor roof half span uh, on the uh, side square. Uh, so, You'll see that being measured up this leg here now. And there's the measuring tape, the half span of the smaller span roof that we spoke of earlier. And there's the right angle triangle that's, that, 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 that we'll be dealing with. And in the other direction now, next, we'll be measuring the major roof half span. And uh, once we do that, once we get the diagonal of that, uh, we will be uh, at the point where uh, we'll be able to measure uh, and get the uh, valley run for this particular roof so the valley run is a horizontal distance it's not on a slope it's on a horizontal plane so also remember that so here now we're animating measuring the uh, valley run distance on the hor on the horizontal plane so that's it there basically yeah so, so now we have our valley run uh, established so um, next um uh, we need to discover the tail run um, for this um, valley rafter. So um, use a steel square is animated here. Uh, hook your tape and uh, we just p pick a, an overhang from the wall plate for the minor tail run. So that's the minor tail run of the um, minor common. And uh, 
we'll use that then and then we'll just slide the square as animated in along the side square the steel square and sides are sliding towards each, with each other and the remaining distance left here uh, is the major tail run as shown here in red and then you'll see here the diagonal then here will be the valley tail run so again they're all on a horizontal plane so um the um we're just going to have a, a closer look here again just before we move on uh, i'll just zoom I'll, uh, just zoom up here here's a here's a closer look so this is now this is our valley tail run and this is the uh, minor uh, tail run for the minor common and for the major common we call it that's the from the wall fish uh, that's the that's the that's the tail run for that particular um, rafter so yeah um <clears throat> Now that we've discovered the um, valley run and valley tail run, uh, we need to discover uh, what deductions are necessary when we mark the valley rafter on the uh, side square. Deductions are necessary to compensate for the thickness and ways that various roof members uh, interact with each other, stemming from their line diagram interaction. So the, uh, before we start to mark the valley rafter on the side square, uh, Let's discover these deductions on the square corner of a sheet of plywood or a sheet of anything that has a square corner, be it chipboard or OSB board, doesn't matter, of course. Yeah. So um, here we go. There's our sheet coming in. And uh, just to uh, show you that uh, we basically need to mark the, um, the a portion of the run line of the valley, the angle that it's going at. So if we just hook the tape here and measure in the the uh, major tail run and then just come up square from here 90 degrees in and measure up the um, minor tail run and join that point to that point and just extend the line on a little bit that purple line uh, that um, is the line we need to start off uh, when we're going through this uh, process uh, for discovering the deductions that needs to be made um, for this uh, for the for the valley rafter so um, <coughs> So here we're shown the, an animation of the right angle triangle down at the tail that relates to this um, next to this uh, set now we're doing here. So um, you'll now see the um, tail, a plan view of the tail um, appear here now. So there's our facial line just coming in there and there's our wall plate line just to give you your bearings and there's the wall plate line going the other direction. And there's the tail of our um, of our valley and those white lines by the way there those are the initial lines when it's taken off the side square later on into this video you'll see the valley marked of the side square and the, the first three lines on the side of the valley will be three plumb lines and i'll have them drawn in white and those are the initial lines but after they're drawn in you'll see that all, um, adjustments or deductions will have to be made so um you know so when you see the same color line on the side of the rafters later on in this video that's the that's the same version of the line across the top edge of the rafter and usually those lines they come square across the top edge of the rafter but they're always transferred down on along a plumb line then go down the side of the rafter so we just continue on that animation there so you see uh, an animation of what i'm after explaining so uh, and there's that red diagonal line that's that will then be the new um, heel line so it's at an angle as you can see so um, when you're cutting it uh, the, the heel line at the back of the board's mouth is at that angle. So that's the angle you'll be setting your skill sort if you're cutting the heel line. This thing is the other end. Um, we're now going up to the other end and we're going to set now. But we're using the same lines that we drew earlier on for the tail. There's 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 the angle line that represents the angle, um, the, the, the center line of the valley on plan down at the tail. But it's the same angle when it comes up to the head and hits the two ridge boards. So... So we're making sa the same corner of the ply with the same drawn. We're making the same use of the same lines. The way I've been in there is broken lines now. So um, here you can see the deductions at the top animated for that ridge board. And I put them in, in three different colors here. Uh, the white line will be the original line, which is usually the very corner. When I hold it on the side square, that's that, con that's that line anyway. And uh, But you can see there's there's one deduction on one side of the roof, which, by the way, is... That's the side of the roof that has the larger span, the one with the shorter corner here, with the shorter corner here, and the longer deduction here is one on the is on the roof that has a steeper pitch and smaller span. 
and from here to the point and we'll be the next one you'll see animated so all those measurements when you look at them there they're on a horizontal plane those colored measurements so that means when you look at the side of the rafter those measurements should become a square off the plumb line because if they do come square off the plumb line then you know they are on a horizontal plane so never never measure the directions along the rake of the rafter they have to come square off the plumb lines on the side of the rafter just bear that in mind so here they are animated in, in colors and just showed you a view here of the piece that's been removed in uh, shaded in blue just to give you um, a visual on uh, what's happening here so there it is falling away so yeah so um, now we're going to mark um, the actual rise of the roof now because we're getting ready now to mark the actual valley itself now that we have enough information uh, so you can use this formula that's shown here uh, half the span of the you can pick the major roof I guess multiplied by the tan of the roof pitch for that roof and uh, hit the equal sign that should be your rise make sure your cal scientific calculators in degree mode if you're using that formula um, the pitch of the minor roof then is it just goes to a rise so that pitch might is probably not going to be an even figure uh, unless it's a pure coincidence so uh, you're being driven by the pitch and rise then of the major roof in this in this example anyway yeah so we're measuring the rise there now and um, now we're going to measure the opposite to the rise which is the run uh, on the horizontal plane so here uh, yeah making the point here you, you can use you're using Pythagoras theorem if you want to get the to um, get the value run uh, so to get that distance you could have used this formula that I've mentioned here yes, uh, but we've already got it physically off the side square earlier on anyway so so here we go marking the uh, valley run on the other leg of the square and now we need to mark the valley tail run on the side square as well so um, here we go I'm marking it on here now so now we're, we're ready now to place the actual valley rafter and it's on a very thin line that you might see that will, will represent the back line or the top line of our of our uh, valley rafter and you can see that that back line um, you know meets with the outside point here of your side square so this is the right angle triangle we're dealing with those outside points and that back line so we'll just continue on this here you should see the rafter coming into view here now and there it is placed and uh, set your bevel then <coughs> you put your bevel onto the um, top of the rafter and swing the blade so the blade is in line with this right le rise leg of the square you then have your plumb cut set you know then that, that is the correct plumb cut for this uh, valley rafter so once you have that set you're going to have the same plumb cut down here and the same plumb cut down here you'll have three plumb cuts initially drawn on the side of this valley which i mentioned earlier uh, that i drew in white you saw a plan view of these lines already now you're seeing the view from the side of the same uh, initial lines so here we go drawing your plumb lines slide your bevel down draw the other one right here at the end of the valley run line and then draw it down at the fascia and you might have to square square it out with a square or a larger square or anything and just get that point and then bring your bevel in again with the same bevel as already set and there's your three plumb lines on the side of your valley rafter so um, <clears throat> next thing we need to mark is the deductions on the valley tail and um, here I just rolled out a sheet there just to show you something we have already previously set in this video and how it relates now to the rafter that you have left on your side square so I'm just going to project some lines here down now so you see it all how it all relates um, there was the plan view of those initial lines I mentioned earlier on the video and now you'll see how they relate to the side of the rafter that's now placed uh, on the side square at the correct angle so here they are being animated downwards now we've got to mark the uh, bird's mouth and to get the bird's mouth you need to get the upstand from the common rafters animated here just now and trans take that distance and as shown here come down from the back of the valley on that second line in uh, which was which is going to be one part of the heel line of your um, bird's mouth for your valley and then draw that line and this by the way we're on the wider the, on the major side of the uh, valley the major roof side we'll say they want the roof with the lower pitch but larger span so just to, just to get your bearings there i just want to mention that once you have that done then you'll see the portions fade out here that's going to get cut away and um, just going to always draw in x's on whatever it is you're going to cut off so you won't make any mistakes so here's the x's animation you now after that of course uh, we're going to uh, we're going to be cutting those off so here we are cutting out the uh, cutting out the uh, fish cut and bird's mouth on your uh, 
on your value rafter. And you see the hidden line there, by the way, appearing as you cut the fascia cut. That's the shorter on the far side after you make this cut. Because remember, that's an angled cut. You have your skill saw set at an angle. So the cut on the far side now, there's the shorter that's left on the far side. That's why I put that hidden detail here. And I'll be doing a similar thing up here with the bird's mouth. So you'll see, you'll see a hidden line appear. That's the shorter line from the cut on the far side. And we are looking again from the major groove side of the valley at this moment. Just to give you, just to help you get your bearings. Yeah, just putting that note there based as, as, as I just said to you guys. Yeah. So next we need to go to the uh, top of the valley rafter and take out the same deductions that we had found out or discovered earlier on. So I'll zoom up here, zoom right into the valley rafter as it's placed on the side square. Or while it's on the side square here. And I, again, I'm going to roll out a sheet here from our previous setting out to discover the deductions. So you can see how that relates to the actual rafter that's left on the side of the, uh, on the side square right now and there's the lines projecting down here is the initial white line i mentioned earlier on which i usually line up at the very corner of the actual piece of timber itself because it's the handiest if you need to hook a tape or anything you know you're hooking with that line version of the uh, rafter and uh, the other lines in are the uh, that's the point and here's one of the shorter shoulder to form the point and here's the longer shoulder on the far side of the rafter to form the other part to form the other shoulder that gives the points just a little animation here just to emphasize where those deductions are and they're coming at 90 degrees off the plumb line as stated before don't forget that folks always remember they are 90 degrees off the plumb lines not in line with the rake of the rafter so um so here we have the top of the rafter which is now going to be cut and again you'll see a hidden line appear on the far side that's what's left from the shoulder on the far side from the skill saw running through so and there's your point so there's your off center point there there's the hidden detail lines on the other side of the valley rafter here, uh, just a little animation just to illustrate how to quickly get the uh, soffit cut. If you measure the length of the fascia cut on your comment from here to here, then on the actual this side of the rafter, measure that same distance from here to here. So that's an animated view there, just to give you a good visual on it. So just making a point here, folks. Um, the uh, video you've viewed so far was based on an example of a valley rafter with half span uh, to outside a wall place measurement used. Um, uh, if all the wall plates are kept in the same distance in from the outer face of the walls then the overhangs uh, wall to face distance will be different so yeah you you you, you might want you, you might be okay with the case where the overhang on the um, one roof as opposed to the other wider roof they might they end up different when they come down to your uh, fascia level um, and currently that's up to this that is the scenario the overhangs from the wall would not be the same uh, and that might be fine there might not be an issue with that but you could be in a situation where you need to have the overhang from the wall for both the major roof and the minor roof as we're calling them you might want to have the overhang from the wall the same on both roofs so what do you do in that case so I'm just going to go into it here just to uh, show you an approach you can use uh, which basically means you're moving in one of the wall plates the wall plate on the major roof in this example is moved in towards the center of the roof uh, just a little bit uh, so as when it does fly past the wall uh, it will have the same overhang as the minor roof will have so we'll go into that here now so here we go um, here 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 is the initial setup on your side square when we discovered our valley run um, that was the valley run that, that uh, would give us uh, different overhangs from the wall out rather than from the wall plate out. So um, if you wanted the same from the wall out, then this is the adjustment you'll have to make here. So um, after mar marking the hair spans on the side square, the overhang from the wall on the side square is animated here now. Here we go. There's the overhang that we want from the wall animated here now. Then do the same on the other leg as animated here. Same up here. And in between those points, you're now drawn a line on your side square. And you can see that, 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 fa that's, that line is the run, not just out to the wall plate now, but out to the fascia on both roofs. That's what that purple line, the ends of that purple line represents. You know, from here, from here to here is the run from the center of the ridge out to the fascia line. And on the major roof, and from here now to here is the run of the minor roof uh, plus the uh, desired overhang uh, on the uh, on 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 the other roof so that's what you're looking at there so let's just going to play this along and uh, 
If you want to discover what distance to move the wall plate in on the major roof, uh, the animation is showing you that here now, and you can see that distance here and here, they need to be the same as animated there. I'll see there's the line coming down. So that distance from here to here will now be the same, measure square off this line, the same distance. That, In other words, that blue line and purple line need to be parallel now. And when you draw them parallel, it will give you the distance from here to here, and that is the distance you'll have to move the wall plate in on the major roof if you want to have the same overhang from the wall out towards the fascia. So there's my adjusted value run there now. Now you'll have the overhang from the wall the same if you go with that run instead. And uh, of course, once you have that adjusted value run, as I call it, it's the same process as we've discovered from the start of this video on, you know, um, just that you'll be using an adjusted value run rather than the initial value run we discovered if you want the same overhangs. So here's a little animation just to show you the wall plate uh, moving in. There's the initial position of it, but now that's the new position of it. So that has reduced the half spin from wall to wall plate on the major roof. And there's the difference from there to there. That's how much you have to move it in. So yeah, I'm just uh, briefly stating what's basically happened here, you know. Um, now that you have the adjusted value run, you can now use that as stated already. With the roof rise and side square as shown earlier in this video and continue on from there use the same approach just as mark the tail run etc etc so here we have um, <coughs> a, an animation just showing you a direct way you can also measure uh, once you have the uh, ridge board in position and uh, whatnot you can measure directly if you're wondering about the uh, the uh, line length of your valley rafter so here <coughs> i've just brought into uh, just brought in here showing you illustrating the uh, the upstand again comes into play here once more and uh, that will be used up here at this junction up at the ridge boards as animated and then measure down to the corner and that will give you the length thing this um, from, uh, along the back of the rafter we'll say down to the corner before you offset the bird's mouth but you've already you've already measured from the point uh, up at the ridge board though so you've already made you've already allowed for the ridge board thickness at the top using this approach <coughs> Um, you can take it a step further then by getting an offcut of that same uh, valley rafter that has the same thickness so, or any piece that has the same thickness and just place it up at the junction but you will need to uh, when you place that offset up at the junction you will need to uh, point it down aim it or eyeball the side of it so as it's um, so it's lining up with the um, corner of the wall plate down below and uh, this coming up here now you'll um, you'll be able to use that off cut then here it comes <coughs> so okay you place yeah you mark it you've measured down the upstand already here and then you've drawn a line out parallel with the uh, ridge board edge and um, that's the point you'll measure down and uh, so you could use a lash you know just hold the corner of the very edge corner of a lash because it might be hard to hold a tape up there especially if you're working on your own so hold a lat from there and then just hold it at this point down here but you've already have to mark the thicknesses of the thickness of the valley rafter which is marked in here from here to here and just measure to this point and this is the back heel line um, you, 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 that you'll be cutting with the skill saw right there on the uh, on the wider span uh, lower pitch side of the roof so that's just a quick way if you just want to cross check after having marked on the side square and you're just you just like to cross check it for you cut it. That's just a quick way you can also check it. So um, <coughs> the uh, following is uh, <coughs> another way to find the distance by the way to move in the wall plate um, in order to get the same overhang as we've already discussed in this video. If you want the same overhangs off both walls from both roofs. Um, basically if you get the corner of a sheet of plywood again and uh, mark the two pitch lines of both roofs in from the corner of that plywood and um, that will get you um, that will get you the distance that you need to move the wall plate in also and uh, and you'll also have an opportunity to place your off cut of your ridge board and maybe put on your slate less and see how high or low you should have the ridge board and if you need a soft cut uh, or if you do how much of a soft cut you need so here's your sheet of plywood and there's the first pitch line uh, draw and just hook your tape and measuring the overhang is animated here now and mark it here then and uh, when you draw that line where it cuts 
where it cuts the, um, the, 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 the steeper pitch, we'll say, draw a line off at 90 degrees to the left, so where it cuts the lower pitch line, which is the, ma which, which is, uh, the um, other roof, and um, that will give you the distance to move the wall plates in. And you can see there, if you measure from here now to there, that is the distance that you move your wall plate in if you want to have the same overhang off the wall. We're assuming this wall plate's in flush with the wall for the steeper pitch uh, roof. So there is your overhang and you'll get the same overhang then from here to here provided you move that wall, the wall plate into this this far in from this vertical line. So, And as stated earlier, why not draw in the, the width of your rafters um, take in your slate and lat there just to see how it all joins up and you might decide then when you hold an off cut of your fascia board here and just position position your slate and lat against it and this is typically where I position the top surface of the lats in line with the back corner of my fascia um, not always the case but typically it would be for me anyway and um, so if you're putting on a slate roof that means the slates will bend slightly the last row of slates will bend just enough to tighten them but maybe not enough to uh, crack them of course so, but that's something you'll have to judge, and you can always take a slate as well and draw another lat up here and uh, position the slate, and you can see how much the slate will bend. So you can do all this before you, um, while you've while you've gone to the bother of drawing this already on the corner of the street, why not go a couple of steps further and, and um, discover other information you'll need before you uh, start your roof. Uh, just a few points I want to make here. Um, when you're nailing in the irregular valley rafters, as we call it, um, here's our nice symmetric view I suppose you could say of our two ridge boards where they meet up at the junction and here is our uh, valley rafter in green and when you when when you nail that in first um, you could have this point and this point lining up and this is on the uh, major roof side <coughs> of the valley this is the minor roof side so you'll see the shoulder drops low on the minor roof side just to get your bearings so I'm um, just making a few points here um, Keeping the uh, common rafter in line to make the point that if you're keeping this in line, well, this thin, this this point then is going to protrude, and from here on it's protruding this much. But um, as we go through the animation, you can actually slide this ridge board up slightly so it lines up at the point. But then that means the top line of your commons and jacks will be dropping down slightly from the uh, top of the ridge board, as animated here now. So that's coming up here now shortly. So there's yeah. So here it is animated. So that's the new position. So now, so now this will be, this corner has dropped a little bit from the top of your ridge board. So if you draw a line along here, that will be the top line of your jacks and commons. And keep the same distance down the other side and, and keep your rafters to it. And, uh, because this, this surface is lower, like this, this top surface here is banking in towards the roof with steeper pitch. So, um, the top edge of the top surface of that roof will override in towards the center of the um, valley rafter which is what you want to have so um yeah there's the line drawn there now so that'll be the top that'll be the line to keep your jacks and uh, your jacks and uh, common rafters too and uh, by the way you know your jacks then will be in line with this the top edge of your jacks will be in line with this corner here on this side of the roof which is the major side but on the other side, um, <clears throat> you're going to have this this much protruding above the valley when you're nailing in the jacks. So the ingrain of the jacks from here on up, you'll see ingrain on the on the um, edge cut on the jacks. So um, and that's fine because that surface, that line represents the amount of surface that encroaches over the banked top surface of the valley, which is what you want. You want to keep the Keep it towards the center of the valley. So when you put on the valley boards later on, it is in line with the center of the valley itself, valley valley rafter itself. So hopefully that will give you an insight into what's involved into setting out an irregular valley rafter. All the best. <laughs>